Cutscenes have been an integral part of video games since the very beginning. There's been pushback against them as video games become more cinematic with real actors standing in for their avatars, and critics say they're intrusive or a failure of storytelling, but I disagree. Cutscenes are a tool for controlling pacing and expressing information that isn't always easy to express through gameplay alone. In Ninja Gaiden, you're rewarded for clearing these super hard levels with an animated cinematic that almost looked like watching an anime on an 8-bit platform. In Maniac Mansion, the camera literally cuts away to show you how the other characters are reacting to your progress, which provides clues and information you couldn't organically see or provided context for the ever-changing world state. It made the world feel larger, where things were happening independent of the player. It's an important tool in the game dev toolbox, one that can be abused, but given that cinematic heavy games still sell millions, it's a tool that should be mastered. You can find tutorials on basically any aspect of game development online, but Cutscene directing is frustratingly sparse. There are tutorials on how to use certain tools like camera controls, but I've never seen a deep dive on the subject of actually directing a cutscene. AAA studios can afford to hire VFX studios that handle the bulk of the work, and if you think about your favorite full motion videos and trailer footage, they're almost always directed by a separate team. As a small dev, resources are tight and you've got to learn to stretch, but the approach to cinematics is virtually unchanged. You're either working with in-game assets or custom assets. In-game assets are just that. If your character needs to express that they're attacking something, you don't need a new attack animation when the one you use every time the player presses a button works fine. This is the approach a lot of indie games use because it's cheap and efficient. Custom assets can be thought of as full motion video from the CD era, creating bespoke art and animation specifically for a scene. The animated interstitials of Hollow Knight and the full screen panels of Perfect Tides are scenes that exist outside the core gameplay. These are understandably rare because you're creating assets that will only ever be seen maybe once, but it's always a treat to see. They're the video game equivalent of Sakuga. It's special when used sparingly and should be treated as the event they are. My first concern when directing a cutscene is the transition. This is easier for me as I'm making an adventure game. There's an expectation from the player that whatever they click on will trigger some kind of inf interaction. The transition establishes that something is happening and there's no greater tool to signify this than the fade out. The fade out is the universal language of, I'm taking control away from you now, and from a technological standpoint it's your opportunity to set the stage behind the scenes. In the split second the screen is black, you can move the camera, reposition elements, and queue up animations. A lot of modern games don't even do this anymore, resulting in a sort of single take style, but even these games use trickery to hide the setup. The next time you play God of War or Resident Evil 4, notice how almost every in-game cinematic begins with a doorway transition or zooms in real close to the player to hide all the behind-the-scenes fudgery. Transitions can also hide a lack of assets. In this cutscene, I have the player drive up to a gas pump. The camera fades out as the player hears the sound of a car door open and close. I could spend a dozen hours modeling the car interior, the door opening and closing animation, my character getting out of the car and closing the door, but the fade out is convincing enough because it's baked into the visual language. If you go back to the PlayStation era, you can see that lots of actions happen off screen. The first zombie in Resident Evil is introduced by hearing the door open off frame. The infamous Jill sandwich scene doesn't even show the ceiling crush the room, just the sound of it doing so. Even animated shows save money by having actions happen off screen, and that's okay. The audience imagines what's happening even if they're denied seeing it. This scene is directed through Adventure Creator's built-in visual scripting toolset, which gives me precise controls over simple events. I'll go over Adventure Creator in a future video, but it's instrumental to my workflow, because it lets me string little actions together into more complex scenes. The scene begins in black and fades in as the camera zooms into a stage. A few camera cuts shows off the characters, and I change the course's animation to synchronize their movements. For more complex scenes that require a custom asset approach, I turn to Unity's timeline. It's a multi-track editor, not unlike Unreal Sequencer, although perhaps even clunkier, and this is a big problem in general. There, there just aren't many great tools for directing, and people who create custom solutions have no incentive to share them. Timeline lets me animate actions precisely, and it's pretty robust what you can do with it, just a major pain in the ass if you need to make any changes down the road. Because of this, when making complex cutscenes, I thumbnail the process, drawing tiny little pictures and scanning them, and I'll even write time codes and create a temp audio track. I like to use a fake actor to replace the player character. This prefab only has an animator attached to it, and I can spot it in place of the player character at any moment, who I usually flag as invisible or teleport them to somewhere else. It's not necessary, but I find it's cleaner to work with a simpler asset. 
The introduction to the farm segment has a lot of working parts for a scene that's over in 60 seconds. I needed a separate area off screen for the APC shots, and the dirt road animated motion is just a looping section that snaps back and forth. The camera is parented to an empty object. This kind of simulates a real-life camera rig. It's just easier to move a camera attached to a dummy object than to control it directly. The announcement trailer was entirely hand-thumbnailed and timed around the song. I used my time codes to then script scene by scene the shots I wanted. I even created a director's script that automatically transitioned from one scene to the next. About half the trailer was hands-off, just animations, but the other half was me directly controlling the player on a timer to the next scene because I wanted to show off the UI and interface. Cutting a trailer for a narrative game is probably easier than something with more gameplay because I don't have to be good at my own game and can cheat what I want to show off. To close, here's my trailer animatic side by side with the final trailer. All of this was animated with a combination of Unity's timeline and frugal use of in-game pre-built assets. To reiterate, good cinematics are all about careful planning. Plan early and smartly and it'll pay off in the end. If you don't think the wow factor is important, then think about how much lesser your favorite game would be if it didn't treat you every once in a while.